So you can't find a piece of land? There's nothing available? Well, I'm gonna show you how to uncover hidden opportunities on today's episode of The American Landman. Here's the north end of this uh, lot number two. And this could be a nice little food plot. There's a lot of trails going through here that I can notice in the grass. You can see how it's really muddy, but this could easily be cleared out. You know, small stuff like this could be taken out with a brush uh, mulcher type uh, skid steer, really easy. And you can make a tremendous food plot back here on the end of the farm field. So you got food here, you got security and cover back here. This would be a fantastic spot to put food. Okay, another feature that I look for is access. And I like properties that are quiet and secluded, but not too far off, but far enough that you don't hear a lot of road noise. And that area right down there, that's County D up here near Clayton, Wisconsin. And then you come up this gravel road and it's really not popular. We've got a house on the corner here. If I turn the camera around, we have a house in those trees right there. So really not much activity here and that seclusion but ease of access is always important. I try to find that with every property that I sell. Okay, well, let's talk about these small properties. You know, sometimes little properties kind of go unnoticed. And if you don't come out and look at them, you only look at the photos on a listing, you might realize, you might miss the, the fact that these properties have huge potential. And this property is one of them. This is a property that I actually have listed. This is in Polk County, Wisconsin. And it's initially was a 135 acre farm that had seven property IDs in it. And they ranged anywhere from about five and a half acres up to about 39 acres in size. So property IDs are separate parts that have their own tax IDs, their own tax implications, and they can be at any size. So when you find a property like this, 135 acres that has multiple small parcels, you can subdivide it up and that's what we did here. So I'm on what's considered lot number two, and this is a, about a 22, 23 acre parcel. It's got some cornfield, it's got some wild fallow area, and it could be a great hunting property or it could be a, a place to build. It all depends on what you wanna do. And the opportunity here is that if you buy this for a very low price, I think I got this price at under about $145,000. You come in here and this is the way you improve it. You could build a small structure, small house on the front end, maybe a small cabin if you just want to sell it as a, as kind of like a recreational property. And then on the back side like this, you come in here and you till this up, you just spray it dead. You maybe come in with a forestry mulcher and you chew up the small stuff and then you plant this in some green perennial plot. You take that property and it's 145, maybe you get it for 135, you do the improvements and instantly you've got a $200,000 property all day long, you put it back on the market and that's how you make some money. So you take these properties, you look for something that's kind of a hidden gem that maybe isn't so good. And this is a great time of the year to find these properties. I always like to come out in this time of the year in the spring where it's cold, it's wet, it's rainy, everything is gray and wet, it just doesn't look good. But I'm telling you, this property is going to look way different in a couple months. And if you plant some food plots out here, you get some basic improvements, maybe put a little small tiny cabin on it. It's a totally different picture come August and people start looking for these properties. They're willing to pay for them because hunting season is coming up and they don't have anything yet. Okay, well, Lucy took me back into a thick area and look what I found. This is a winter deer kill. Uh, we've had so much snow up here this year in northern Wisconsin, uh, and it just has been dragging on. Here we are in late, the third week of April, and we got snow on the ground, and it was snowing last night. Now, these deer are coming out of winter, and they're able to find food, but, you know, this just a month ago, the snow was probably up to my thighs in here, and this is the result. We get a lot of winter kill. Now, this isn't all bad. You know, that's Mother Nature's way of kind of thinning the herd, knocking it back because we had easy winters before. The herd comes up, and there's just not enough carrying capacity of the land. But when you come back to a property and you see a small deer like this, this is the fawns, and these are the ones that are very susceptible to this because they just can't keep up. They don't have a lot of fat reserves and they can't make it through the winter. And then the other side of that is the bucks who have been run down from the rut. They are low on energy reserves. They're living off that fat stores and a tough winter like this makes them very susceptible to winter kill and predators. So thought I'd show you that. Just a stark reminder, mother nature, she doesn't have a sense of humor.
Okay, you know, I'm in the upper Midwest here. You guys know that. I'm in Wisconsin. But the same opportunities exist everywhere throughout the Midwest and probably throughout the United States. You come into these small properties and you don't have much equipment. And you think, well, what can I do to it? Well, a hunting property can always be improved. If not for hunting, just aesthetically by a few pieces of simple equipment like a backpack sprayer that you can get from like a hardware store for 50 bucks, fill it full of water and glyphosate, come in here and spray this down, kill it, come back a couple weeks later, do it again, maybe a third time, just so you really kill these weeds. And if you start early before spring green up, cause you can see it's all laying down, the young tender shoots are gonna come up underneath here and they're easy to kill. And then you just come in with some vitalized seed that I sell. You broadcast it in with a bag spreader. You literally take a bucket and you just wing it and you throw it out there. And then you come back in here, if you have a tractor or a gator, if you can get a cultipacker, which again, it really depends on what you have, or you can just let mother nature work it into the soil with rain. But soon all this will be dead. Then the new green stuff will be growing up. It'll look very diverse and very pretty. And for about a hundred bucks, you could make this look way better and make it look improved. And every single time I do that, I can probably, I can get about $500 an acre increase in value just because I fix it up, made it look a little turkey. So it doesn't take a lot of equipment, guys. A little imagination, a little sweat equity, and you can gain a lot of equity. Now, hunting amenities like this, they don't bring a lot of value to a property on an appraisal, but they do bring value to a property when you're looking at buyer interest, this type of, uh, of structure, although it's kind of MacGyvered together, buyers like this. It's something that's in good shape. You could tell the, the timber's new. It's not running down and it will get you a buyer faster. It doesn't always appraise, but definitely gets you a buyer faster. And there's guys that are looking for these turnkey properties that they don't have to do the work because it's already done for them. Okay, well now I'm back on lot number two, and this has got a nice little secluded little field up here. There's tillable land in the front. It's broken up by a little timber. There's a trail that comes through, and then we got this field here. Again, simple project. You could simply rent this out and have the uh, farmer farm it for corn and soybeans like they are now. Again, make it better by coming in with some vitalized seed, Throw that down here and make it nice and green. And you buy these properties in the spring. You do this work during the summer. And by the fall, this is beautiful. You got a little hunting shack amenity. Guys will crawl all over this, guys. This is a $145,000 purchase with some improvement. You can make twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on it all day long. I love these small properties like this because there's so much potential and people just look by them, especially this time of the year, which I'm going to make some comments about that. Okay, a lot of times I come to these properties in the spring and I like to buy it in the spring because it's all wet and it's nasty and nobody wants to come out and buy these properties and they think they can't get around. But of course, I got the gator. I can go anywhere. But you buy these properties in the spring and they just don't look pretty. But man, in about two months, this is all going to green up. All this water like this is going to dry up. And what was soggy and gray and ugly will look beautiful. And then you fix it up over the summer. And again, in the fall, you put it on the market and you resell it when guys get hot to buy properties. And it's just a game changer. A couple months is amazing. And you could take these properties, you could turn them over really quick. Of course, you have short term capital gains, but when you make $30,000, $40,000 on a project, I don't know. It's worth it to me. You got to pay the taxes and you got to take some opportunity risk. Okay. But then all you do is you take that money, you put it back into another property and maybe you can do a 1031 exchange. We could talk about that. It's just taking the money from this property, move it into another property. Don't pay capital gains. And you do that again and again and again. And you step yourself up the, the, like the equity chain or the wealth chain by doing that. Start small, $145,000, $5,000 of improvements or less. That's money, baby. I want to make another comment about what I see here. So this is a very secluded field here, as you can see. And this is about five acres in size. And what I like to find on small properties is there's some area that people can get out of the, uh, the, the ruckus of road noise and farmers and neighbors. And this property has it. So all around this property here is nothing but timber. Uh, there's some wetland that's not very functional, uh, uh, kind of considered wasteland, but for 
for the purposes of hunting and recreational, you know, I always look for wetlands because if they're on the edge of food, this is this will fill up with deer every single time. So when you're looking at these properties, you kind of assess them. Think about that. Think about quiet and right of quiet enjoyment and try to find properties that have uh, maybe some hunting amenities like this that are secluded and quiet because that's what the deer like. And it always, again, it brings money and it gives a lot of interest from outdoorsmen and buyers that are hunters. Well, I had to get back at my truck because it is cold, wet, sloppy, not a good day to be out. But great day to be looking at property if you're looking for opportunity. So these small properties can be, you know, very affordable with some minor improvements, not a lot of them, uh, money. You can upgrade them. You can turn them over, make $500 an acre almost every single time. And this is an example of that. So I hope you enjoyed that short video. Hey guys, if you're interested in doing this kind of stuff, get out there, make some offers. You can't buy a property unless you're making offers. I've personally made three offers in the last three weeks. I'm, I haven't closed a deal yet. I'm trying to buy my next property to improve, bring it to you guys, show you how I do it. So if you're interested, give me a call. I'll talk to you about my experience. And as always, guys, please follow me on my podcast and this YouTube channel. I do appreciate the likes, the follows, the comments, the phone calls I'm getting. I'm Neil Hawker, and I'm a land specialist with Whitetail Properties Real Estate. Thanks for watching.